When the plant blew up, I was in Boston, in Cambridge at the time. I was actually preparing my dissertation prospectus to come study food safety in Japan. This nuclear accident happened and I had to rethink a lot of what I was going to do. I came to Japan a few months later to start studying food safety, looking at the effects of the Fukushima nuclear accident on it. This affects pretty much everything. It affects drinking water, it affects mushrooms, it affects uh, leafy produce, meat, seafood. Quite a bit of radiation was also leaked into the ocean. The prices for Fukushima produce has gone down. Some of the farmers, they can't farm anymore. The ones that lived within 20 kilometers of the nuclear plant, they, they've been displaced by an exclusion zone. Well, some of them are able to grow food with undetectable levels of radiation, but that doesn't mean that the public necessarily wants to eat Fukushima product. So after the earthquake and the nuclear accident, it became very difficult for Fukushima farmers to sell their products. This company decided to try to help them and they bought this machine so that they could test their products and sell them and show that they were safe. They take the vegetables and they cut them really finely and they put them inside this container. This is locked so that there is no radiation that comes in from the outside. They start the testing and results are shown up here uh, for, the, for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. My main research looks at consumers, producers, retailers and the government here in Japan. I do a lot of interviews with people to find out what their reactions were to 311, what kind of steps they took after that to ensure food safety. Food in Japan is often described as having both anzen and anshin. Also, if you want to describe something as being safe, you would use these two words. Anzen is uh, the, the scientific part of it. Anshin is subjective and emotional. It's a, it's a personal relationship to food and how trustworthy you think it is. So I've been trying to look at it in Japan since the earthquake, how is it that this relationship between the subjective and the scientific works? How do you make food safe in a post-Fukushima world. We rely on supermarkets and other places to buy the products that we eat every day. And especially now here in Japan with this question of uh, radiation, are there enough systems set in place to check for radiation behind these products? So these are questions that all of a sudden have come up in Japan that didn't used to be here. And people have to learn to deal with them.